Joe, I've got a problem, man. Oh? What's up? I gotta do a video about the Zender power station, but it's really powerful. Yeah, isn't that the point? Yeah, but it's for a review, and I gotta find its breaking point. Everything has a breaking point, Joe. You okay, man? We're going on a trip. Bring the foreman. Oh, oh okay. You got it. The Superbase V4600 claims to be the first modular portable power station using LFP batteries, and these provide more reliable, safer, and cleaner energy. And it's said that it's ideal for RV, off-grid living, EV charging, home hole power needs, and is an emergency backup for sudden outages, and due to its zero millisecond switch over time, an ideal uninterruptible power supply. Zender sent me this unit and asked me to do an honest review on it. It's just a loner, so I have to give it back. When I started looking into the specs on this thing, I was immediately shocked. The thing literally does it all. So could this actually be the perfect off-grid or adventure power solution? With only two days to put this thing through the ringer, I knew I had to pull out all the stops. Okay, Zender sent me this unit to test and do an honest review of it. So we figure we're either going to break this thing or make Tony Stark jealous. Nice, so there's two ways we could do this review. I could just give a whole bunch of stats and graphs and figures and all that stuff, or I could just show you how it works. And I think I'm gonna do both. So here we go. So this thing is capable of charging either off of AC or solar power, or both at the same time. This thing literally has every connection you could possibly imagine. It's almost hard to talk about what this thing can do because it's like a Swiss army knife. It just has so many options. Zendier made an amazing app for your phone that can connect either with Wi-Fi or with Bluetooth, so you can access things through your home network or just using Bluetooth on your phone. There's two different speeds in which to charge this as well. There's a fast charge, which is about two hours, and then if you really want to preserve the life of the battery as long as possible, you can actually put it into the slow mode for charging. So just using solar panels alone, this can accept up to 3,000 watts of input charging power. So you can actually have two of these base stations next to each other and then stack the satellite batteries up on top of them and the whole system is scalable up to 64 kilowatts of power. So Zendir made this really awesome graph that shows like how much power your appliances in your kitchen take up, which is really informational, like a coffee maker, a blender, your dryer, your refrigerator, all these things that are common in a household. You can really quickly see that you need a lot of power to truly take your house off grid. What's really cool about the system is that it is scalable and modular. So if you wanted to go out on an adventure or a camping trip or something, or you want to take your RV out, you just take one of the, the base stations, maybe one of the satellite batteries with you, and you're good to go. You can even charge an electric vehicle off of one of these things. So not only can you charge it with solar power or AC power from your house, you can actually go to an electric vehicle charging station and using an adapter, you can charge this thing with like a Tesla charger. So it only takes one cable to attach this device to a satellite battery. So you just have these special cables that loop from one to the next and that's it. That's all you have to do to set this thing up as a system. You can turn off and on the LEDs you can actually configure these as well inside the app. You can configure like what color these lights are, which is kind of fun. You can see the main capacity of the battery system right here. It shows you how full it is. Um, the input watts for charging, how many watts are going out of the unit once you start plugging things in, how many hours are remaining at this current load capacity, which is really cool. So we have AC outputs on the front. We've got one, two, three, four. These are 15 amp circuits. You've also got 240 in this unit as well. So you can use 240, you can hook up a dryer to this thing. In case that load of laundry wasn't quite done when the power cut off, you can hook up your dryer here. What's bonkers about this system is that you can use all of the outputs on this thing simultaneously. For DC, there's PD outputs here, so you can fully charge your devices at the highest capacity using these outlets. They have a USB-A, which is 2.4 amps over here on the right side. And then come on over here on the side. There's an Anderson plug, which is really handy. There is a car adapter, some barrel connectors. So to charge this thing, you just use the AC input from your typical house. And you've got the fast charge button or the slow charge. 
And this is gonna allow your battery to last longer. So the batteries on these things last upwards of 10 years, thousands of cycles. And if you use this, it's that's gonna be healthier for your battery long term. But if you just wanna charge it quickly, you can do this and it'll charge in like two hours. And then they have a Zen charge port, which is their proprietary port. This is what you'd use uh, with an adapter to hook up to an electric vehicle charging station or to charge your EV vehicle. And then they have a DC input. And this is for that satellite battery cable connection. This is the one cable that goes between your satellite batteries. And that's it. So Zender says that this thing can output 3,600 watts of power. So we got a plan. So on one of the hottest days ever, we got some tech that can produce a lot of heat and take up a lot of energy. Awesome, we're gonna be sweating. All right, this is a really hot day and we're gonna make it even hotter by turning on all this stuff. So for real though, we just wanted to bring some power hungry appliances out here, see if they work in a hot environment and to see if this thing can really source the wattage that it says it can. So to start off with, we're gonna fire up the microwave and the microwave is rated about a thousand watts. So we'll see what it does. Okay, so we fired up the microwave and checking out the output power here says that it's pulling a little bit over a thousand watts right now. It's really cool to be able to see that in real time. And you can see the time remaining is three hours. So we can run that microwave for three hours at that rating, which is pretty crazy. Okay, so now it seems stable. I'm gonna try to fire up another device here. So I'm gonna turn on the fan all the way. And that'll help with uh, cooling me down because it is screaming hot in this place right now. Doesn't really change much. I don't think this fan pulls very much. All right, let's try to fire up this heater and see if that uh, gets us to trip this thing or not. Whoa, look at this. Okay, so we are now pulling 2,400 watts of power. So far, so good. What, can, what else can we get away with now? Joe, I think we need more power. What do you think we need to do? I think we need the foreman. This, all right, so this little George Foreman girl uh, sucks up 760 watts. Let's see if that's accurate. There we go, we got the light on. We've got everything on right now. We are 2,600 watts. Time remaining, a little over an hour and a half on this. We went from three to an hour and a half. Yeah. Which is three appliances. It's a lot of power. So that's why you can see like, yes, it's a really powerful battery, um, but that's why you need the satellite batteries to give you that extra runtime on your appliances. If you're gonna get one of these systems, consider um, how long you're gonna need to have those appliances run for before recharging. You might need to pick up like one of the satellite batteries or something like that. Okay, it seems stable. <laughs> um, what else can we do? We wanna push this thing till it breaks. So um, we got the, we got the <laughs> iron, iron. this will break it. This is over a thousand watts right here. All right, you ready to break this thing? Let's try it. Let's see what happens. There it goes. Tripped it. So let's pull that back out and see if we can get this thing restarted. <laughs> so I think you gotta push. Just back on? Nope. There we go. Back on. There we go. There you go. So I just had to push the AC button to get it back up and running again. So that's cool. It's not like a circuit breaker, you gotta reach around back and flip or something like that. It's all digital. Okay, so we're pulling like over 2,000 watts between these appliances and everything, and it's stable. So I, I wanna try to figure out what to do next. Uh, what do you think we should do? I could eat. Let's make some food. So uh, what'd you think? It's really cool. Yeah. I mean, can it do anything else? Yeah, you wanna drink? Sure. <laughs> Remote control.
Patrol. So for backing up your home power, you can plug in like individual appliances to the Zender unit, like your dishwasher, your dryer, your refrigerator, your toaster. All these things can be plugged directly into the unit. If you want to power your entire house off of a Zender system, then it's best to get the home panel. The home panel handles the transfer of power to your house. The home panel can be connected to two base units simultaneously, which is great for extra capacity. The Zender base units also can interface with a traditional load transfer switch. So if that's something you already have installed in your home, then you can work with Zender on how to interface that properly to your house. The home panel allows you to pull power from your Zender base stations, but also it allows EV charging. So you can charge your EV vehicle through that as well, which is pretty cool. Also, what's interesting is you can use Google or Alexa voice assistant with this system as well. Pretty cool. So for us, we don't have a very big house and we have just a couple of critical items. So this actually would make really good sense for us. But if we want to make it like really easy in case of a power outage, we would need to get that home panel so that it handles the switch over without having to get a bunch of extension cords and plug in my refrigerator and all that stuff. So I think this product is like really compelling for a home backup power solution. Just be aware that you need that transfer switch and you're good to go. Okay. All right, so for an off-grid solution, for a home backup solution, for a camping solution, this thing is great, obviously. But I've got one more trick up my sleeve. It's time to phone a friend. Gordon, what's up, man? Josh, I need your help, man. Yeah, man, what's up? I'm doing a video on the Zender Super Bass. Have you heard of it? Yeah, man, that thing's a beast. Yeah, I've been trying to test it to see if it's like a good off-grid solution, you know? Um, but I might need your rig. Do you want to give it a try? Yeah, bring it. Right on, I'll be right there. All right, so this is my buddy Josh. He is an overlanding, boondocking, camping enthusiast, and he is also an awesome wildlife photographer. He was generous enough to come out today and to test this thing with me, and uh, we're gonna see if it's any good for what he does. You wanna check it out? Yeah, let's do it. All right. All right, this is Josh's like first impression of the unit, so uh, what do you think, Josh? I think it's great. I mean, the size looks amazing. Do you know how many watt hours it is? Uh... No, actually, <laughs> right, let's look on the back. Maybe it's on the back. Holy cow, 4,600 watt hours. That's 40... over two times the size of the one I have in the camper now. What do you use now? So right now I'm using a Yeti 1500X, which is about 1500 watt hours. But right now, the only way I can charge it is either with the truck on or the solar panel. And in winter time, the days are really short and I don't want to drive the truck a lot, so I run out of power a lot. Well, if you run out of power, like what do you what do you gotta do then? Like, so right now, the only way to charge it is either with the truck on or the solar panel. So if I run out of power, I need to run the truck, which kind of negates the purpose of an off-grid rig because I don't want to have some sort of giant generator to power it. Having a battery like this would allow me to go much longer, and then when it is sunny, it would charge it back up. That's really interesting consideration because, like, I think like a, a lot of people probably buy this as a home backup system or like an emergency backup but like for recreation this is actually pretty compelling because it gives you a lot of capacity and then you can charge it with multiple different ways it would make a big difference having this size of watt hours would be amazing sometimes i need to sacrifice like i can't charge a computer tonight i can't do this because i need to have the power to run the diesel heater and everything like that so having the flexibility of having more than enough power and then when I can charge it, it charges it up, would be kind of a game changer for me. All right, so it has DC output. Does it have any DC inputs? Um, yep, so on the back over here, it's got like their, their like satellite connection link and the, uh, for like their batteries. Oh, wow. And then uh, this here is for this like solar charging. Got it. So like, I'm sure I'd be able to use it with mine. I would just probably need an adapter to go between my solar panel and this, but that probably wouldn't be a big deal. So do you think that this is something that like you could actually fit into the camper and integrate with what you got? Let's go inside and take a look. Cool. So 
So this is what I have now. It's significantly smaller. Um, I would probably need to cut some of this away to make it fit, which honestly isn't the end of the world. I'm probably gonna have to cut something away to make it fit no matter what. Um, but the physical size is significantly larger than this one, but the power is three times more than what I have now. So it's kind of a trade-off. Okay, so three times more power, that's, that's considerable. So like, what does that equate to you being able to do when you're out like in Yellowstone or something like that for a week? Yellowstone specifically, I would be able to park somewhere and have more than enough power to do everything I need and not have to worry about one drive in the truck or cloudy days. If it's a nice sunny day, this works completely fine because it can charge off the solar. But if we have a week of rain and things like that, then I start to really worry about how much power I'm gonna have. Am I gonna be able to charge my camera batteries, my computers, everything like that. Being able to charge in an EV would be absolutely amazing. Now everything in here is pretty much ran off power. So the battery is super important. My cooler is 100% battery. My diesel heater runs off battery and needs power for that. All my lights need power. So having enough power is really important. Now the only negative that I can see is the physical size of it. Being able to fit it in here, it's pretty small. It fits in the back of my truck, so I don't have a ton of real estate, but I think it would be able to be done. Okay, Josh, so is this thing good for overlanding, for wildlife photography, all those things that you do? Is this, is this a good fit? I think so. You know, it has a really large amount of really usable ports. Um, you could plug pretty much anything that you want into it and charge it. The only drawback I can see is the physical size, where a lot of that comes with the watt hours and the actual capacity of the battery. But I think it's a really good trade off to have that much power and consume a little bit more of your camper space. I think it's nice. I, th I could see it being really helpful for like extended like trips and or if you were really concerned about having to go off grid for a while. I feel like that would be a big comfort to have that, you know. Absolutely, especially in the winter time. You know, I do a lot of trips in the snow and the days are really short and it's usually really cloudy. So honestly, my biggest drawback and my biggest worry is always power in the winter time. Summertime, not so much. Winter time, absolutely. There we have it. We've we've looked at this thing from the perspective of like straight up survival, from backing up home power, now camping and overlanding. This thing has a lot of utility and Yes, it's got some quirks to it, but I really do think this is an awesome product and Zender has knocked it out of the park with the design on this thing and I can't wait to see what they come up with in the future. So, um, eh, I hope you found that useful or at least entertaining. We'll see you later.